Second Samuel, chapter six and chapter seven, uh, we see David wanting to bring uh, the Ark of the Covenant back to uh, Jerusalem, <clears throat> back to what uh, is referred to as the city of David. So let's just jump right into Is coming from the New Living Translation. <clears throat> and David again gathered all the elite troops into Israel, 30,000 in all. And he led them to Bela of Judah to bring back the Ark of God, which bears the name of the Lord of Heaven's armies, who is enthroned between the cherubim. They placed the Ark of God on a new cart and brought it from Abinadab's house, which was on a hill. Uzzah and Ahio. Abinadab's sons were guiding the cart that carried the Ark of God. Ahio walked in front of the Ark. David and all the men of Israel were celebrating before the Lord, singing songs and playing all kinds of musical instruments, lyres, harps, tambourines, castanets, and cymbals. But when they arrived at the threshing floor of Nacon, the ox stumbled, and Yuza reached out his hand and steadied the Ark of God. Then the Lord's anger was aroused against Uzzah, and God struck him down struck him dead because of this. So Uzzah died right there beside the Ark of God. David was angry because the Lord's anger had burst out against Uzzah. He named the place Perez Uzzah, which means to burst out against Uzzah, as it is still called today. David was now afraid of the Lord, and he asked, how can I ever bring the Ark of the Lord back into my care? So David decided not to move the Ark of the Lord into the city of David. Instead, he took it to the house of Obed-Edom of Gath. The ark of the Lord remained there in Obed-Edom's house for three months, and the Lord blessed Obed-Edom and his entire household. Then King David was told, the Lord has blessed Obed-Edom's household and everything he has because of the ark of God. So David went there and brought the ark of God from the house of Obed-Edom to the city of David with a great celebration. After the men who were carrying the ark of the Lord had gone six steps, David sacrificed a bull and a fattened calf. And David danced before the Lord with all his might, wearing a priestly garment. So David and all the people of Israel brought up the ark of the Lord with shouts of joy and blowing of the ram's horns. But as the ark of the Lord entered the city of David, Michael, the daughter of Saul, looked down from her window. And when she saw King David leaping and dancing before the Lord, she was filled with contempt for him. They brought the ark of the Lord and set it in its place but inside the special tent David had prepared for it. And David sacrificed burnt offerings and peace offerings to the Lord. And when he had finished his sacrifices, David blessed the people in the name of the Lord of the heaven's armies. And then he gave to every Israelite man and woman in the crowd a loaf of bread, a cake of dates, and a cake of raisins. Then all the people returned to their homes. When David returned home to bless his own family, Michael, the daughter of Saul, came out to meet him. She said in disgust, how distinguished the king of Israel looked today, shamelessly exposing himself to the servant girls like any, any vulgar person might do. David retorted to Michael, I was dancing before the Lord, who chose me above your father and all of his family. He appointed me as leader of Israel and peop the people of the Lord, so I celebrate before the Lord. Yes, and I am willing to look even more foolish than this, even to be humiliated in my own eyes. But those servant girls you mentioned will indeed think I am distinguished. So daughter, so Michael, the daughter of Saul, remained childless throughout her entire life. When King David was settled in his palace and the Lord had given him re the rest from all the surrounding enemies, the king summoned Nathan, the prophet. Look, David said, I am living in the beautiful cedar palace, but the ark of God is out there in a tent. Nathan replied to the king, go ahead and do whatever you have in mind, for the Lord is with you. But that night, the Lord said to Nathan, go and tell my servant David, this is what the Lord has declared. Are you the one to build a house for me to live in? I have never lived in a house from the day I brought the Israelites out of Egypt until this very day. 
I have always moved from one place to another with a tent and a tabernacle as my dwelling. Yet no matter where I have gone with the Israelites, I have never once complained to Israel's tribal leaders, the shepherds of my people Israel. I have never asked them, why haven't you built a cedar, beautiful cedar house? Now go and say to my servant David, this is what the Lord of the heaven's armies has declared. I took you from tending sheep in the pasture and selected you to be the leader of my people Israel. I have been with you wherever you have gone, and I have destroyed all your enemies before your eyes. Now I will make your name as famous as anyone who has ever lived on the earth, and I will provide a homeland for my people Israel, planting them in a secure place where they will never be disturbed. Evil nations won't oppress them as they've done in the past, starting from the time I appointed judges to rule my people Israel, and I will give you rest from all your enemies. Furthermore, the Lord declares that he will make a house for you, a dynasty of kings. For when you die and are buried with your ancestors, I will raise up one of your descendants, your own offspring, and I will make his kingdom strong. He is the one who will build a house, a temple for my name, and I will secure his royal throne forever. I will be his father, and he will be my son, and if he sins, I will correct and discipline him with the rod, like any father would do. But my favor will not be taken away from him as I took it from Saul, whom I removed from your sight. Your house and your kingdom will continue before me for all time, and your throne will be secure forever. So Nathan went back to David and told him everything the Lord had said in this vision. Then King David went in and sat before the Lord and prayed, Who am I, O sovereign Lord, and what is my family that you have brought me this far? And now, sovereign Lord, in addition to everything else of you speak of giving your servant a lasting dynasty. Do you deal with everyone this way, O sovereign Lord? What more can I say to you? You know what your servant is really like, sovereign Lord, because of your promise and according to your will, you have done all these things and have made them known to your servant. How great you are, O sovereign Lord. There is no one like you. We have never even heard of another God like you. What other nation on earth is like your people Israel? What other nation, O oh God, have you redeemed from slavery to be your own people? You made a great name for yourself when you redeemed your people from Egypt. You performed awesome miracles and drove out the nations and gods that stood in their way. You made Israel your very own people forever, and you, O oh Lord, became their God. And now, O oh Lord God, I am your servant. Do as you have promised concerning me and my family. Confirm it as a promise that will last forever. And may your name be honored forever so that everyone will say, The Lord of heaven's armies is God over Israel. And may the house of your servant, David, continue before you forever. O Lord of heaven's armies, God of Israel, I have been bold enough to pray this prayer to you because you have revealed all this to your servants, saying, I will build a house for you, a dynasty of kings, for you are God, O sovereign Lord. Your words are truth, and you have promised these good things to your servant. And now, may it please you to bless the house of your servant, so that it may continue forever before you. For you have spoken, and when you grant a blessing to your servant, O Sovereign Lord. It's an eternal blessing. <clears throat> and so we see several things that are, are taking place with, with David. Uh, first off, why, why in the world would, would the guy tie? Because he touched the ark. Well, Numbers 4 tells us, don't touch the ark. You can't touch the ark. And even though it's been a hundred years, there. It, God, the word has to change. He says, don't touch the ark. And, and, and he touched it. Obed-Edom, we find out in First Chronicles, <clears throat> was, was a Levite. Who, uh, who, so he was a priest from the tribe of Koath. And so he was fully able to be able to take care of, of the ark of the covenant that David had, had left with him. Um, it says that uh, when we deal with, with, um, with Micah. Michael, that she became upset and she became disgusted. David had laid aside his his kingly robes, um, and what most likely happened is David dressed like any other person would dress. And Michael thought, "Hey, you're the king. You, you have to be set apart. You are different. You you have to be royal all the time." And David said, "Nah, before God." 
uh, I am just a man and I will worship him however I can. And so it's a great picture of of our attitude, how our attitude should be for God. Our faith should not be based completely on emotions because our emotions go up and down, left and right. It should be based on faith and fact uh, in history and study. And we worship God any way we feel, uh, but it can't be all based on emotion. I want to share a, a picture with you um, from the, well, it's a fresco. This is a fresco of David dancing with Michael uh, being upset. You see the Ark of the Covenant. The Ark of the Covenant was, wasn't very big. It was only a little over four feet by a little over two feet. So uh, it wasn't, wasn't very big. Uh, but this is a fresco that's in Rome from the 1500s from Francisco Salviati. Uh, but it just shows his um, idea of what is taking place. Never be ashamed. Uh, to worship God uh, when your only intention is to worship God, not to bring attention to ourselves, but God and God alone. Have a great day.